Hi everyone, this is Brittany Bond and welcome back to the podcast. Hmm, so this podcast is going to be a life update, which has got a lot of juicy lessons and learnings for you if you want to if you want to feel into them because <laughs> I feel like my life is like a movie and it just keeps going like up and up and up and I'm like on the roller coaster like this is amazing. Oh wait, this really sucks. <laughs> oh wait, this is amazing. You know, that is that is life in my opinion. Um but I feel like if you have like the supportive people around you that really love you, then even the parts where you're like, what the fuck is going on? I don't understand how to go through this. How do, how do I figure this out? I don't have the answer. When you have your people around you and they're like, I believe in you, you got this. If anything, like, let me support you. Then to me, it makes everything worth, it makes everything fun. It makes every all of it worth it. And that's what I have in my life right now. And so I'm like, just a shout out to the people who are supporting me, like my soul, my soul family. I would not be able to go through such a big life expansion that I'm going through right now without you. And you know this. I'm not, I'm not saying anything you don't know that I haven't already told you to your face and appreciated you for. But I'm telling you in the podcast to all of you who are listening that it is so important to have your people around to build your soul family. And this can be your blood family too, but like have people around you that really have your back, that show up for you in all the ways, physically, emotionally, financially, if you need it, whatever it is you need. If they're like, I'm here, I got you, I have your back. Ah, <sighs> That is what helps you have the safe launching pad to launch off into what is actually your soul mission, accomplishing what is actually your soul mission. And one thing I need to say is if to have those people, you need to be one of those people. So for many years, like um, I actually had it reversed where I was the one showing up for everyone. And I was like, had their back, you know, would sh like do whatever it took to make sure that they were okay. Like, you know, a lot of my friends jokingly call me like protective mama bear, Brittany. Um, and this year, especially after my last breakup, I was like, <sighs> it's my time to receive because we really are only, re we aren't receiving the things that we actually desire because of our own negative beliefs. And I was like, okay, what negative belief do I have that I'm the one showing up for everyone and they're not showing up for me? Like, why, why do I have this belief? And when I went into it, um, recently in therapy, it was like, oh, that it, because it feels unsafe, it feels vulnerable to allow myself to receive even from the people that are closest to me, maybe even especially because I'm so worried that it will somehow cause disconnection if I allow myself to receive. But that was because in the past I have trauma where when I did receive, it was actually unsafe and it was unhealthy. And so for me, it was just better to not engage and to not need anyone's help. Really happy that I healed this. <laughs> Because it's like, one, I, I have such a big soul mission that I know I can't do it alone. I don't want to do it alone. It's way more fun to do it together. And two, um, it didn't feel good in my body, you know, like to be doing everything on my own and to be always in my masculine. I'm going to make a podcast about this coming up about what is actually natural for a feminine to create the things that she knows she's here to create. But like, what's the actual support that she needs from the women? And what I want to talk about, especially is the men in their life. Because we have so many times as women where it wasn't safe to receive, you know. So sometimes we block ourselves from receiving actually healthy masculine support from, you know, like we'll receive it from the women in our life. But the masculine, oh, I don't know, you know, do they want something from me? Is there a catch? You know, da, da, da. is it actually safe? So I'm going to make a podcast about that. But I just wanted to share that the, pot the play party went really well this weekend. Oh, my God. It was like a torrential downpour. I've hosted probably 40 play parties in this house, uh, the collective, the remote collective, over the last four years. But uh, every single time, it was mostly sunny, you know, or it rained that day. And like, you know, by the time people were arriving, it was fine. This day, last Saturday, literally the entire day, up until after the play party started, like after the play party started, somehow the rain stopped. But up until the play party, it was like torrential downpour where like the sky was like black, <laughs> you know, like this gray black where you're like, I don't fuck with that. Like, <laughs> I don't want to go out in that. Also, I felt like the barometric pressure of, because we live on this small island, like whenever there's a huge storm, it's like literally feels heavy. It feels more dense in my body and I just feel like tired. And I was asking around and like almost everyone was feeling the same way on this day. 
that the play party was last Saturday. And so I was like, fuck, 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 fuck. You know, like basically one, is it safe for people to drive? Like, should I reschedule the party? Cause I don't, cause we all drive on scooters here. It's not like, you know, you just get in your car in the States or where it's where I'm from, but like anywhere in the world, you just get in your car and like weather doesn't affect you as much here. It's like, you're, you're getting this water just like sprayed in your face from the rain. When I was driving with Afro on my scooter the other night and I was like, so happy the rain had stopped. And then, but it had just poured. Right. And so there was this huge puddle and I was driving through the puddle and then this truck came the other way and just sprayed me it was like a car wash of water just like psh, like on my face and Avril got really scared and like almost jumped off and I'm like it's okay it's okay uh but I also was in shock myself because um I don't know the last couple of rainy seasons I borrowed my friend's jeep and so I had a car you know and so this was this is like one of the first rainy seasons in a while where I'm really feeling it all the way through but anyways back to my story people coming. Some of them are new to the island, new to driving bikes. I'm like, is it actually safe for them to drive in the rain? Also, I think a lot of people were feeling this kind of like heaviness. And so people were canceling and I was just like, are people even going to come? Like all the things I was feeling all the things. Right. And then, uh, everyone came, even if they were completely drenched, I think halfway through, like the time when you could come, because I asked everyone to come between six and six thirty. I think halfway through that time, like it's kind of stopped raining, but like in the beginning, it was like torrential downpour. So we were like welcoming everyone who came with like warm cacao my friend had made, um, and like a towel and like lots of hugs. Like, good job, you made it. I'm happy you're here. Like, welcome to the party. Ah, and it was such a cozy environment. Um, it's really interesting because. Um, like, again, the parties are so different based on, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about my vanilla play parties. It's erotic, no penile penetration parties that I do for play, for sexual healing, all the things. I feel like if you listen to my podcast, you know what play parties are. But just in case anyone's new up here, up on here in my Britney Bond land, my world that I am generating at every moment, or at least riding the roller coaster up. <laughs> but anyway, so back to my story. Uh, <laughs> we welcome them all. And every time like we do a part, I do a party. It's so different. Like sometimes it will be like, uh, people are going like, sometimes it'll be like people are really nervous and it takes a while for them to drop in. Sometimes it'll be like, everyone's going for it at the very beginning. I'm like, Whoa. And then like, so for instance, the last paper I did a couple of weeks ago, it was, it was like more sensual and then sexual. And it was a lot of cuddling and like people talking and like, you know, there was a lot of fun people had, but I would say from the intensity level, it was lower than average of all my parties. And that's okay. Everyone still had a nice time this time around. I don't know if it's because it was raining. People were saying it felt like Christmas vibes. We just made it super cozy. Um, and because it took them, like they went through something, they went through an or ordeal to get here get to the party because everyone was driving in the rain I felt like there was this feeling of like we made it you know this is a really special thing we're all here for because some people just didn't make it they couldn't make it through the rain or the barometric pressure but we made it and when I did the games like I do these boundaries and connection games people were just really getting juicy very fast and I was like whoa okay so it's going to be one of these parties um and then and it was one of those parties and also it felt really connected you know like all of the parties I do I say like the difference between these and like other temple nights or different tantra things is that my goal is that we go through this experience as a community and that it's a safe place all the way through right and so people have this energy like normally in the party but this party it was like in the group chat that we have we have a group chat of like everyone who's ever been to the parties uh so it's a lot of hundreds of people um and <laughs> in this after this play party people were like putting their photo in like hi i'm this person i'd love to connect with everyone this was like the most magical night and that made me feel so happy because i was like i'm always looking at these events um and experiences as like making art so i'm always like how can i make it more safe how can i make it more connected how can i help people to feel that even after the event they can connect to each other you know so there was something about the energy of this party that was like really creating that environment of people to want to extend it beyond the party, it, the connection. So yeah, just celebrating that. Um, 
I'm going to do another one next weekend on the 23rd, uh, November 23rd. So if you're coming through or you want, to, some people plan their trips around the play party so they can attend. So I'm just putting that out there that I'm going to start doing them in a way where you can plan your trips. Cause for a while I was like very flowy and now I'm, especially as high season is coming, I'm really excited to do a lot more and bigger events. And I'll explain more about that in a second. But, um, Oh, I wanted to give a shout out to a really beautiful woman who came to the play party and has listened to my podcast for years. Uh, she was, um, I had a really beautiful connection with her in the beginning where like when it goes into the open play and it just becomes this house party, I was like lighting candles over here by the temple, the altar. And she came over and she asked me like, how are you feeling tonight? And I'm like, Oh, thank you for asking. Like, I, I feel good. I feel like I'm dropping in. You know, it was hectic today, but now everything's settling and I'm just really happy everyone's having a good time. And she said, people don't really ask you how you're feeling normally, do they? And in, in these parties. And I was like, actually, no, because everyone's so nervous and excited. They're just like very full with whatever their experience they're having. And I honor that. And that's like what I'm here to host. And also it was really beautiful that someone was like, hey, I see you as a human, not just as our host as our mama bear, <laughs> high priestess of the night holding this pleasure school. But like, I see you as a human and like, how are you doing? And I was like, Ooh, thank you for seeing me. And then she told me and she, we ended up having a really nice connection, um, later on in the night where like, uh, she got triggered and I just asked her like, do you want can I hold space for you? So we went into, we went into the bathroom because all the other rooms were very getting juicy. So that was the only private space and it was like raining outside. So we couldn't go out in the yard. Uh, so we went into the bathroom, like sat on the edge of the bathtub and I just listened to her and she shared about some of some triggers that she had from the past that were coming up in the party, which is a very normal thing to happen. And, um, I just held her hand and she cried and then we just like talked and I just held space for her. And for me, it was so beautiful. I was like, wow, she really saw me and I see her as a sister and now I'm happy to, and I am happy to show up for her. I'm happy to do this for everyone who comes through my space and especially for people who really see me, you know, it's like a really nice energy exchange. Anyway. So she said at the end of that connection, like, um, I, I want you to know that I was really excited to meet you tonight. And a question that I had was, are you going to be as like real authentic and genuine and nice in real life as you are like on your podcast? And I was like, Ooh, I love hearing these things because I'm always like interested to hear like how people view me and stuff. Cause there's just, for me, it's just, I'm just me. So anyways, I was like, so what's the verdict? What do you think? And she's like, you're even nicer in real life. Like, I didn't know this was possible. Like, she's like, a lot of these other, like, spiritual leaders um, that I follow online, um, she's like, I'm not sure if they would sit with me on the edge of a bathtub and really hold space for me, you know? And that's something I'm like, I said to her, I was like, I'm here for all of us sisters. I view every woman as a sister, unless they prove otherwise, <laughs> unless they act otherwise. I give them that, that energy and that support. And for me, that is... Like for me, my sole mission is, you know, showing up for women, empowering the women in my life in any way I can. And then also building my, my new earth community. Um, and this can be, th those two things can happen in many different ways, but sitting on the edge of a bathtub with a woman who needs support, that's one of those ways. And that will always be part of me. It doesn't matter if I have a million followers on Instagram or whatever is happening in the 3d w reality. I will always show up for the women in my life. And that's a, like a vow that I make to myself. That's me being in my integrity. You know, that's not like I'm saying this to try and get some, I don't know, social cookies credit, whatever they call it. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I am this, this fairy mermaid that has been on this island for five years. And, you know, I was in corporate. I did all these business things before. But after the last, in the last five years, I've just kind of really dropped into my feminine, very much into the spirit world. And then I'm just like popping my head back out like, oh, yeah, OK, I'm going to try and translate how I th talk about things. I'm not going to talk about everything in the way of energy. I'm going to try and like break this down for you. But at the end of the day, like, I just kind of feel like this alien mermaid that's just here, like, showing up and, like, pretending <laughs> to be human. <laughs> so if you feel that way and you resonate with me, I'm here with you. I'm here with you. Let's do this. Let's pretend to be humans and do fun things and do our soul mission. I know I'm a human. It's just that there's big parts of me that are very different than most humans. So anyways, I don't even know why I went down that, that angle, but... um 
we're here for all the tangents, right? Um, so the play party was amazing. Next one's on the 23rd. Come on out. Some of you are already messaging me saying you're coming this high season. And this is what I'm very excited to talk about. I have been just... Um, <laughs> I have been like hinting at it in my Insta stories, but I'm trying, I was choosing, this is manifesting 101, is when you're in the middle of birthing something into the 3D, you do not talk about it. You know, it's just like, it's like when the woman's in her first trimester, first three months, and she doesn't tell anyone in case like something doesn't work out. This is how it is when you're really birthing something that is, um, that is big into your 3D reality. Don't talk about it. <laughs> let it brew or choose to talk about it with people who will support you in your expansion. Because if you do tell everyone, then they can add their negative beliefs, their fears onto it. And the energy actually goes down. Right? So I am very happy to announce that I, well, let me just tell you a story for, I know you're going to be like, wait, no, what is it? I'm going to tell you in like five minutes, but first I want to tell you that this space, this remote collective, this house, three people, three bedroom villa that I've had for four years, over four years, has been my only like, I mean, since my marriage, but even then we, we moved around into different houses a lot. This is the longest place I have lived in one house since I was a child. So even in my like growing up with my family, we moved around a lot. So there's like one house when I was like from eight to 12 that was like my real first and only secure home until this one. So it's been a really big deal for me to be in this house. And I tried to buy it from them. I tried to long-term lease it. It's like my Thai family who own it. And they uh, also happen to be the mafia here on the island who actually run everything. So it's been this really interesting dynamic of like, trusting the universe you know because I've never had a long-term contract but I've always just like just paid my rent for years and years and everyone's just a happy symbiosis this is also something that's very Thailand like you probably wouldn't get this anywhere else um so but there was part of that that for me was like this is not stable and also I was I had my thing around home and basically for a lot of years while I've had this collective, I haven't lived, I had this house, I haven't lived in it. For the first two years, it was a community space. I lived on the beach in a villa. And, um, and then even when I moved in, I still was like, I don't want to live here. I want to keep this as an event space. There was, but what it was, was basically the home, this house kept itself secure and stable for me. Even when I gave it away to friends and moved to Europe, like anytime I needed it, it came back into my life. And it's always been, you know, Brittany, this is your home. Through all of the relationships I've had, I've had two and a half relationships. <laughs> it's funny that I say half, but yeah, I've had two and a half major relationships in this house, like two where it was like, these people could be my baby daddy. And one where it was like, this is really intense, but I don't actually want a full relationship. So can you please move out? <laughs> But um, through all of that, this has just been like, this is Brittany's safe space. This is Brittany's home. And it was really subconsciously without me wanting to, I was very fighting it, but it was subconsciously healing my connection to home and stability and everything I needed around that. And uh, just this summer, so after living in this house for many years, I started to appreciate the house like it's it's really beautiful like it's like a three bedroom three bathroom um villa that opens into nature like pure jungle nature and it's literally five minutes from everything I love so within the town that I live in it's close to everything and also I can host parties here they don't care like even through all of lockdown we were able to do events um so it's it's been everything that I needed it to be and and when I, when, you know, when people ask me, why don't you want to live here? I was like, oh, it's too small. Or like, I don't want to live in the same space that I do events. And one, it's not too small. <laughs> but I do feel that there was a energy of like wanting just to have my own. I always say, I just want my own little bungalow. And then to have the collective is like the community space, the event space. That's what I, and that's what I had off and on over the years. Um, so 
like my own little bungalow on the beach. And then this is like the main house. And really this is me wanting to go back to tribal times where we have like our core community area and then we all live nearby so we can have our own space. But when we want to be in community, we just come to the community space. So that is like still a dream of mine. But while that dream is unfolding, I don't want to live in the community space. I, w I need to have my own. I actually am a huge introvert in order for me to recharge and get the downloads and like really be in spirit. I need a lot of space to be my little high priestess cave. That's what I called it. I want my high priestess cave back. Um, but this summer, I started to realize how much I actually loved the space, you know, and especially because like here on the islands, if you've been here recently, um, since the war in Israel, there has just been a floodgate of Israelis who have moved here. I have, I'm super supportive of Israelis. It's just, and I have many Israeli friends. It's just the energy on the island is like they're bringing this energy that is very cultural for them to the island, which equals a lot of building development and charging a lot of, like how much money can we make off people? That's the energy that's now on the island where it used to be very flowy and everything was very cheap and da da da. So like all the all the housing around is like doubling and tripling in price just in the last couple of years. And my house has kept the same price since before COVID. Maybe up a couple thousand baht, which is like thirty dollars, thirty euros or something. So there was this feeling of like just being very contained and tucked away, but I wasn't appreciating it. And then this summer, after I broke up with my last partner, I was like this is my home. And actually I love my home. Uh, and there were some things that happened. I don't even want to go into them, but there was an opportunity. I'll we'll just put it this way for me to really claim that the collective is my home, that this is mine. The universe gave this to me for however long I want to stay here or however long I meant to stay here, whatever is according to my divine plan. This is my home and I will stay here. So <laughs> the irony of this is the second I decided that and was basically healed that part of myself, I upgraded myself vibrationally in this way. I'm not joking. That same weekend, my Thai landlord came to me and said, we need you to move out. <laughs> and I was like, what? Come again? Come on? <laughs> like, and they were like, yeah, um, s they basically want to move like their older grandpa like it's a Thai family and the grandpa just had surgery and they want to move him into this house and hire people to take care of him. And it's like all one big Thai family and they all just like kind of use all their houses for whatever they need. Um, so it's not like, like at first I thought they wanted me to move out so they could like, you know, flip it, which means like charge a lot more for it. But I think they actually want, and I'm learning, I learned that they just want to keep it for their family. And that's, that's their right. You know, they're, they're allowed to do whatever they want, but like it felt better in my psyche that I wasn't just getting like kicked out because they want to make money, but it was just like, they just need it for their, they just need it. And that's their right. And so that helped me to align back with the universe of what I said earlier. It's like, I will be here. <laughs> I just didn't realize it was going to be so soon <laughs> after I said that, but I was like, I will be here for as long as I meant to, you know, like with, according to my divine plan. And when they told me that I need to move out, they gave me like time it was like this was like right after my ex and I broke up so like in June I think um and they were like we need you to move out you know by October end of September or something anyways fast forward I, I went to um I was decided I was going to go to Burning Man go to the states heal all my stuff with my family and that was around the same time that I was meant to move out of the house so I went back to them and I said hey can I have more time please, 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 please. And they were like, okay, how much time do you need to move out? And I said, can I have till January 1st? And they were like, okay. So I go to the States, I come back, everything's beautiful. I'd already paid for rent all the way up until the end of October. And so I pay for rent for November just now, like last week. And then they call me and they're like, why did you pay rent? We thought you'd already moved out. And I was like, what? <laughs> In Thai you say, Elena, which means like, what do you say? What did you say? Um, and then they came and talked to me in person and they were like, look, in our minds, we thought you were moving out like end of October. We thought that's, and this is a very Thai style thing to do, which is like, just change things. Cause I, I have a legal background. Like I know exactly what we, we decided. It was me and multiple people. We all decided it together, like me and the, all their family. And also they are, they are the owners here and they are the mafia. So I'm not going to fuck with that. So 
what they said was I was like, well, I can't like, I don't have anywhere to go like today, you know? And they were like, okay, can we just do a happy medium where you move out by December 1st? So really in the end, it's only one month less than what I expected. Um, and I was like, okay, universe, I'm getting the answer that I meant to move out of this house. Like, and I've been looking at villas. I think I shared about this on a couple, a couple of my last podcasts. I've been looking at villas and, you know, I want to be able to do events there. I want to be able to have Afro there. Like, and these are like events and pets. These are like, all of them are like, no. And then I convinced them like maybe, and then still like, I didn't find one that was a fuck yes. Um, for many different reasons. And I really follow my intuitive guidance, especially on homes. Like all of my friends are like, Brittany, you are able to manifest the most luxurious places around the world. And I have like over the last 10 years, I've traveled so many beautiful places and stayed in so many amazing, um, spaces artistically activating high ceilings on the cliff on the ocean in the jungle like all these places and it's because I really get in this I use all of my manifesting my juicy manifesting energy to to just really like call in like oh it feels so good to live in this house and I'm so excited that it has all of these things and it feels like this and I am able to pay this price you know and da, 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 da. so I really I really work my energy up so I was doing that with this with this new home that is coming into my life and also just saying like whatever place is meant for me by my divine plan is is coming to me now like I have I receive it it's here it's happening like show up please I was like please <laughs> it's I always feel like it's this joke between me and the universe like I'm here I'm trusting you got my back are, are we doing this <laughs> like I'll step off the ledge but you're going to help me fly right So I um through the universe, I like through, and for me, the universe a lot of times happens through my community. So through my community, I was sent, and that's how I found this space. Like this collective was someone in my community sent me the, the, the listing for it. I would never have found it on my own. And that's what happened in this situation. Someone sent me it. And I, I always knew that's like a green light to at least check it out. So the villa was um, sent to me. It's like three bedrooms, four bathrooms, infinity pool overlooking the jungle. It was used for event spaces around sex positivity before. The owner uh, is someone who knows me in the community and knows my events, supports them, supports what I'm doing. Uh, at first he said no events, no pets. He said both of those are okay. And so, and also just this house is like it's like the queen of Sri Chinu lives in this house. You know, it's like at the highest, the Sri Chinu is the town that I live in on the island uh, of Copenhagen, if you don't know what that is. But it's like the, the elevation wise, it's the highest villa in Sri Chinu in the, in the town. And like it's, it's literally the highest up and it's just so luxurious. It reminds me of a home that I grew up in in California. Like it reminds me of home. And there's something in my system that when I'm in this house, I feel so creative. It's like we we're talking about like, I want to talk about this masculine feminine container, but like the masculine energy of this house. I know the person who built it. He's someone in my community. He really built it like a Western style house. And like, if you've ever been to Thailand, you will know that the houses here are built very flow state. Like sometimes the structure is not right. The roof falls in, you know, you get mold every rainy season. This house is none of those things. It's like as if you're in California with like rain water coming down. And, you know, cleaning three times a week. We have a washer and dryer in the house, which in Thailand is a very big deal. Um, and it's just, it's just luxurious. Like the energy, the furniture, the location, it's, it is top, top, right? So when I was in this house, I was like, I really want this house. <laughs> like emotionally, energetically, I was like, yes, this is a fuck yes. Uh, when I talk to like my godparents and people that I love in my life, they're like, you know, um, financially it would make more sense and be more logical to do this other thing and like this and that and like just be safe and like do you have the right roommates and and so I went through a lot in the last couple of weeks of like who do I actually want to live with because I've lived where I control my house like I'm the only person or me and my partner or it's me and my friends but it's like it's my house right I've lived in that environment for five years so to suddenly go into an environment where there's roommates even if those are my friends, it's a very separate conversation for us to hang out versus basically they need to feel like soul family, like for me to want to live with them. So that was its whole own exploration. Um, and I was able to find the roommates and negotiate the deal. 
negotiate everything that I needed to and, you know, be able to do events there, have Afro and move in December 1st. So like I did the play party on Saturday in the middle of all this negotiation happening with the landlord and then they wanted it done Saturday. So this is when I'm organizing the play party, right? And so I was like doubly stressed out. Uh, and then I just turned my phone off. I was like, I, I boundaries, I cannot deal with this. I need to just enjoy host, do my thing. So that's what I did. But it meant that on Sunday when I was really tired after the play party, it only had a couple hours of sleep. I was in the middle of like negotiating, you know, like a one year contract on the most luxurious villa on Compagnon. And I'm just like so tired <laughs> and just trying to figure out like what's healthy. And like, am I, am, am I, up for taking the responsibility of this one year contract and really going all in and like also committing to making all these beautiful events there and just really stepping into this next level of expansion for me. And it was a fuck yes. And also I was just really tired. <laughs> so, but I did all the things and I had a really beautiful friend throughout the whole day. I had friends showing up for me and supporting me emotionally, energetically resources, whatever needed to happen for me to stay calm and in my center was happening and I really appreciate all of my friends for showing up all my soul family to me that's like you got my back and that's something that has been really healing for me in this situation is to allow myself to feel safe to receive and really allow support in in a way that is supportive and nourishing for me it's it's very vulnerable I'm so used to doing things on my own um so yeah I got a villa that uh, is a step up from the collective and is a new home. That was another thing for me is like when I was looking at a lot of these other spaces during high season, they're only available for like three months or four months. And it's not like a home. Like when you have responsibilities, when you have a dog, when you have like animals, like a cat, and you're like, this is your home. It's not like I'm going to go home and like live in my home country. Like Thailand is my home country. So I want my home to feel like a real home. <laughs> and that's what is happening. Um, and not only does it feel like a real home, it feels like a home that I grew up in. There's something vibrationally even more impactful about this space because it feels like home, like in my body, it feels like home. And that's really exciting. Um, and if you're coming to the island during high season, get ready for some very luxurious play parties, other, other private parties that we're going to have. It's going to be popping off in a way where yeah, it's very exclusive and like, of course I want you all to come, but it's like, uh, it's not going to be random people. It's going to be very curated to the most magical dropped in harp open community, which is part of my soul mission. Right. So everything's in alignment. I'm very excited. And it's funny because when I realized, okay, it's happening. Um, and it all came together on Sunday, uh, but I could feel even Saturday night that it was going to happen. Like I was like, wow, no matter where I end up moving. I, so after the play party, everyone had gone home. I was just wandering through the space and like looking at like all the lights and the paintings and like feeling the energy of what has been created here and like how many beautiful moments and connections and healing and play has happened here. I started to get really emotional. I was like feeling so nostalgic. I was like, oh, I love this space so much. And like, basically that's when I got that download where I was like, this space has held on to me until I could heal my connection with home, right? So like I was, I kept trying to run away from it or move into somewhere else or give it away or move to Europe. And then the space was like, I'm just going to hold you. I'm going to hold this energy until you can heal this. And I did it. I healed it. And now that I healed it, I'm like really understanding what the space was, how it was healing, not just for my whole community, but for me, like the biggest one that it healed was me and it held on to me until I healed it. And now it's time to let me go so that I can expand. And it's like, it's really, it's really beautiful, you know, like, because I haven't had my family support in over 10 years, there's a part of me that is like, am I, am I on track? You know, am I supported by the universe? And then like, I see in these moments where it's like, wow, you are so loved, Brittany. Like you are so guided. You are so supported by the universe, by the people in your life, by everyone who loves you, by the whole community here. And that just gives me so much energy to give back, you know, and to keep 
keep playing out this beautiful timeline, this lifetime of accomplishing my soul mission and showing up for the women in my life and showing up for my community and creating this shift, you know, like this receiving this villa and allowing myself to expand into this is me growing into the vibration or it basically it's matching what my vibration already is, which is it has grown so much in the last four years, you know, to a woman who's fully in her power and who is grounded in the 3D reality and also very, very in spirit and very much getting the downloads and here to guide and lead the collective. Like I'm here for it and I'm doing it because it's, it's part of my soul mission and it's because I love it and it feels like fun for me. Like <laughs> when you know, you know you're in alignment when, when th- what you're here to accomplish in the world feels like fun and actually gives you energy. It's like, oh my gosh. Like I will wake up in the middle of the night with podcasts. Like sometimes I dream of the podcast I'm going to make next and I will dream and I'll kind of wake up in this like half awake state and it's like in my head I hear me saying things in the podcast it's like I'm listening back it's like I'm getting a premonition of listening back to my podcast after I've made it in the future it's very funny and sometimes I'll even wake up in the middle of the night and like write down notes and write down like what I want to say next and all these ideas And to me, that's showing me that this is fun. It's like, this is what inspires me. This is what activates me. And I love it. I fucking love it so much. I love it so much. So I'm here for all of that juiciness. Um, And yeah, I guess like what I want to say at the end of all of this is that if you are in a space where you can feel that you're meant to birth something into the world, you're meant to step up and like play the game of life at a higher level and to allow yourself to really receive all of receive everything that you were meant to receive from the universe. Um, Sorry. I'm just like, you know, one of those days where you're like, what is happening with my hair? And then you're like, look back. I look back at the video whenever I have these days and I'm like, my hair looked fine. And I was just freaking out. Just a little note to note, just to say that this happens to everyone. So, Anyways, um, if you are going through a moment in your life where you are really wanting to step into this expansion, you can feel that the universe wants to utilize you to expand consciousness through you, through you stepping into something more abundant, more expansive, bigger, whatever that means vibrationally for you, you know, and you're in fear of it. You are afraid of of stepping into this expansion. You're afraid that it won't work or that you're not capable of it or you'll get overwhelmed. I invite you to make the leap anyways and to allow yourself to trust the universe. And if you have a hard time with that, then I invite you to get help with that so that you can build your trust with the universe. This is through a therapist, a coach, you know, some sort of resources, trauma re- tools, learning trauma tools so you can work through this. This is also why I have opened up my one-on-one coaching again, because I'm, I had a couple of you, like when I gave human design readings, you were like, do you do coaching? And I'm like, yeah, but I kind of stopped after a while because I wanted to do more like one to many, you know, like make a podcast that thousands of people can watch or make a course that can help, you know, eventually thousands of people. And that was what was exciting for me at the time. But what I'm realizing is that there are certain ones of you that are very um, inspiring for me to work with because I can feel that by me helping you, you are going to go out and accomplish your soul mission and help the collective because it's so big that you need support in that. And so if that is something that you're interested in doing, like working with me on coaching, reach out to me on Instagram and let's explore it. Uh, I only have a couple slots for that, but again, any time I ask myself, so this is how you know that if this is part of your soul mission, ask yourself, would you do this thing for free? Even though you charge for it because there's energy exchange in the world, would you do it for free? Is it something that you love so much and you feel like needs to happen in the world so much that you would do it for free? Like I make these podcasts for free. I would do my play party. I did them for my friends for free when I first started them. I've done coaching for people, thousands of people, probably all my friends over the years for free. And then I just started realizing that this is something that needs an energy exchange. But I knew it was part of my soul mission because I love doing it and I've done it for free already. 
And it's just, it gives me so much energy and so much fun. So yeah. (laughs) Oh, I love helping people to figure out their soul mission and have the courage to go after it and the tools to do it. That really brings so much energy for me. That's why I started doing human design readings because just giving people that one hour of um, launching pad for them is just changed their lives, you know? <sighs> okay, um, I am going to go because Afro is literally looking at me like the saddest puppy in the world because she wants to walk. And her and I are so energetically connected that I feel like a bad mama because I want to go make her feel better. <laughs> it's like having a child. I really view Afro as my child. So I'm going to go walk her. I uh, am in sending you all of this love and empowerment and just like whatever you are meant to do in the world, you have the capacity and the capability to do it. The dreams that were are inside of you would not be inside of you unless you have the capacity and the, like, unless you could actually accomplish them. You wouldn't dream of something unless you could do it. And by doing it, it means just going for it, whether you get to the end goal or not. So like if you have a dream of being an astronaut, maybe it's not like you're actually going to get in space. But if you go on the journey of trying to get there, you're going to like that is that is the journey that you're meant to have. And that's what I find really interesting about my life is I have this 3D goal in mind and I'm like, you know, getting this specific villa or not. You know, like I also had another timeline where I could have you know, moved into a, a house, like a house that was just mine, that's smaller than the collective, not a three bedroom villa, but just moved into a normal house here on the island and then rented a event space. And that would be the more safe, stable thing to do from like financially, emotionally, you know, like living with other people, like all, there's all these things that go into it. But I was like, what is the thing that is actually meant to be for my expansion? And this is something where I want to tell you is like, if you are in one of these moments where like, you are like, I don't know if it's meant to trust the universe. Like, what am I actually meant to do? And you have this 3d goal and you think that 3d goal is the, is the thing that needs to be figured out. It's not, (laughs) it's all of your negative beliefs that you uncover along the way. Like I have learned, uh, so many of my negative beliefs this week, uh, these last two weeks while I go through this process of taking more responsibility getting into a luxurious space on my own where I'm not relying on anyone else. I'm just like doing this as Brittany Bond, independent woman, boss babe, and fully supported by my whole community, right? Um, And especially by the men in my life. I'm really grateful for all of them for just energetically showing up. Um, But it's like, I wouldn't have been able to, the goal didn't matter. That's what I'm trying to say. The goal of a friend of mine said this to me he's like whether you get this villa or not is not actually the point it's all this growth the soul growth that you've gone through this week and all the things you've learned about yourself he's like feel it do you feel more in your power right now through this experience whether you get the villa or not and I was like yeah I do I really feel like I understand my soul mission more. I understand how to speak up for myself. I also understand who actually shows up for me in my life, who has my back, like in a real sense through the situation. And I just feel more in my power. I have more fire under me. Like I'm like ready to go, you know, I'm like, let's go, let's do this thing. (laughs) Let's create beautiful things in the world. Uh, So just sharing that with you, that download, that whether, whatever you're going through right now, it's not necessarily about that thing. It's about your personal growth while you are going through that situation or trying to get that thing. And when you recognize that and you're able to stay in your center more and you have the support and the tools and all the things you need to go through it, it will start feeling like the world is a playground instead of a prison. You know, most of the people live in a mental prison that the world's unsafe, that they need to, you know, play small in the in this game of life but when you realize that the life is a playground and you're meant to play and have as much fun in this game of life you start doing things differently you start showing up differently and i'm here for all of that expansion (laughs) okay i'm gonna go i hope you have a beautiful day i'll talk to you later bye